How do you know when God is talking to you? Do you really know when God is talking to you? One of the great moments of Jewish history was when the prophet Elijah had a confrontation with the prophets of Baal at the bottom of Mount Carmel. See, in Elijah's day, the Jewish people weren't just religious. They were very religious. Not only did they worship God, but they also worshipped the idol of that day known as Baal. Now, this frustrated Elijah tremendously. So he goes to the Almighty, he says, God, here, give me my way for just one day, and I promise you, God, I can win all the Jewish people over, and they will be loyal to only you. The Almighty said, fine, have it your way, Elijah, whatever you want. So whereupon Elijah gathers together the 450 prophets of Baal and challenges them and says, listen, let's have a showdown. Me and you, Mount Carmel, high noon, in front of the entire Jewish people. If I can bring a fireball down from heaven to consume a sacrifice, so then you guys are going to go away and leave me alone. If you can do it, then I'll go away and I'll leave you alone. Well, the prophets of Baal, having the ability to manipulate the forces of nature, said, sure, we're up for it. High noon, everyone's gathered together. Elijah says, you guys go first. Well, they do what they got to do and nothing happens, right? Elijah made a deal with the Almighty. So then Elijah starts making fun of them. He says, you know, maybe your God, maybe he's really old, so he's losing his hearing. You scream a little louder. So they start screaming a little louder. And then Elijah says, you know, maybe your God, maybe he needs your blood and pain and suffering. So why don't you like give him some blood? So they start tearing the skin off their face, bleeding all over the place. Well, noon comes and goes, and the 450 prophets of Baal, they fall down exhausted. Elijah gets up, and he says, pour some water around his sacrifice. The bull's there. And with a very short prayer, he says, God, show the Jewish people who is the true Lord, the true God. Before he finish speaking, a fireball comes down from heaven, consuming the sacrifice and everything around. The Jewish people are blown away. They all announce together, Hashem Hu Elohim, Hashem Hu Elohim, the Lord is our God, the Lord is our God. They take the 450 prophets of Baal, bring them down to the river valley, slit their throats, thereby effectively ending all disagreements. That, by the way, is a happy ending to us. Anyway, they're all committed to serving just God. Elijah is very proud of himself, feels good, goes home, sits after a hard day's work, sits down to a steak dinner and a Diet Coke, and here's a knock on the door. He opens the door, and it's the captain of the guard. See, the only problem was that these 450 prophets of Baal, they were the protégés of the wicked Queen Jezebel. They are really doing her work. She, it was in her interest to have the people not worship God, but to be I, an idolatrous people. And the captain of the guard said to Elijah, said, I'm just letting you know that by this time tomorrow, your fate will be the same as those prophets of Baal. Whereupon Elijah says, thank you very much, close the door, grabs his bag, and heads for the hills. Okay, stop. If Elijah is so powerful, why doesn't he just zap out Queen Jezebel and the captain of the guard? And also, if Queen Jezebel wants Elijah to be killed, so then have him get knocked off right now. Have the captain of the guard kill Elijah. Why, doesn't Eli why does Elijah pick up and run and head for the hills? See, Elijah understands something. Right now, he is the hottest thing around. Cover of Time, Newsweek, he's on Fox, both networks, CNN. He's a national hero. Jezebel knows, I can't kill Elijah. If I do that, the people will revolt against me. And of course, Elijah understands he can't kill Queen Jezebel. Now, he's just the prophet. He can't go against the monarchy. So therefore, he understands that he has to wait. And she understands that she has to wait just the amount of time it's going to take for everyone to forget about everything that Elijah did. How long does it take for everyone to forget about such a great event? About 24 hours. And then everyone forgets about it, they go back to work, they go back to doing their business, and the emotional high of that great spiritual experience has subsided, and then Jezebel knows she can kill Elijah. So that's why Elijah runs for the hills. Back to our story. When Elijah, he's so despondent, when he gets to the hills, he turns to God, he says, God, I can't do this anymore, I quit. And God says, Elijah, not so fast, you can't quit, you're fired. I want you to go anoint your protege, Elisha, for he will be the next prophet of Israel. And as for you, you go in that cave right there and wait till I call you. And when I call you, then you come out. So Elijah goes into the cave. He sits in the cave. Sure enough, first comes a tremendous windstorm. 
I just says, no, you know, it's not God. And then comes the earthquake, everything shakes. He goes, that's not God calling me. And then comes a firestorm. And I just says, you know what, that's not God either. And then, in a very subtle way, Elijah hears a very soft, still voice. When he hears that voice, he goes, that's the voice of the Almighty. He picks up, take, wraps himself in his prayer shawl, and goes to the entrance of the cave and begins to pray. See, Elijah understands that many of us, we look for a great event to happen, to be inspired. We say, where's our inspiration? Maybe a windstorm, maybe an earthquake, maybe a, a life-shattering event. But Elijah understands that the Almighty speaks to us most often in a very soft, still voice, internally quiet. Maybe it's a moment in shul. Maybe it's a moment when we're looking at our children or our spouse. Maybe it's a moment when we're just sitting in the car and we're alone. And we ask the question to the Almighty, God, what am I supposed to do here? Where should I go? What should I be doing with my life? That's when the Almighty speaks to us. We have to look for those moments, create those moments. Create the, that's why we have a shul. That's why we have classes. That's why we have a system in Judaism that teaches us how to meditate and to become one with ourselves and to connect with our Creator. That's what we're doing. We're trying to look for that soft, still voice and look for that moment for the Almighty's guidance. And then we truly understand our moral compass and we truly will understand the direction we should live our lives.